yes, I've got 13 one line macros here that are going to give you mastery with some practice of position in VBA. We have a grid to work with, how well we can move around, manipulate that grid. It's one of the main determinants of our impact as programmers. I want to select this cell. How am I going to do that? Very easy. First macro, F5, play it. And we can see we've selected that cell. I'm going to do that one more time. Play the macro with the F5 key. We can see we've selected that cell. But what if my question was, select the last cell in the range? This is interesting for us because in real life, data sets are getting smaller, getting bigger. They're getting edited. Entries are disappearing. So how might we select the last cell in the range? Well, this piece of syntax dot end, dot end Excel down, Excel up, Excel to right, Excel to left is going to help us. Let's go ahead and play that one. Click in the macro, our second routine here, F5 key, and we've selected to the end. This one is interesting because if I now delete these last two lines of data, and then run the second macro. What cell are we going to select? Stop the video. Think about this. What cell are we going to select? We're going to select the last cell in this continuous range of data, which is pretty cool. OK, so let's suppose we want to select a whole range of data, more than a single cell from a start point to an end point. How do we do that? Well, you see me on the channel talking about range, range, range a third key macro here. So let's use range, range, range. So we say range, the start point we want to select and the end point that we want to select. And here, we're going to just use hard coded values to do that. So let's go ahead and try that one. Hit the F5 key. We can see we've got this range selected. I'm going to make a little change here just to make sure we're selecting our actual data range there. So as we're going through, make sure you're playing with these macros, consolidating your understanding. So that's pretty cool selecting a range, but it's not dynamic. These are hard coded. So can you stop the video and think, how would you make this dynamic? So if we had more data added, this would still work. Let's look at macro number four, hitting the F5 key here. We can see that range is selected. Doesn't look very exciting, does it? So I'm just going to clear out these two rows at the bottom. Now what's going to happen? We're on macro four here, hitting the, uh, hitting the F5 key. And we can see we've selected that range just to consolidate this. Let's um, take some data down here and then let's run this macro again. And we can see that whole range is selected. The little piece of magic here is the end of the selection. We are defining dynamically, dynamically using this dot end Excel down piece of syntax. Let me present a problem to you. This is all exciting, but what if this happens? Have you seen a data set like this where there's a row of data missing? Happens all the time. Happened to me today on a project. So we still want to select the whole data range. We want to select the whole thing, but there's an empty row there. We're going to have a problem now, like with our previous technique, which was pretty cool. We're only going to get to the next empty row. So we've got a problem. Let's think about some alternative logic. Rather than starting, to the, starting at the top and going to the bottom of the data set, what would some alternative logic be? Any ideas? How about starting at the bottom and then going up to the first row that has data in? Different logic should give us a similar result and should deal with this problem where we have empty rows in the data. So let's build towards this with some foundational concepts. How do we select the last cell in Excel? Do you know that? How many cells are there in Excel? There's 1,048,576 rows. When we did, when I did my masters, we had to memorize that kind of thing. No, we didn't. That's only a joke. F5 key, and we can see we've selected the last row in Excel. It's the end of the world down here. But we can do better than that. Uh, we can use this rows.count line of code to help us select the last row in the spreadsheet in a more dynamic way. We don't want to hard code stuff. We don't want hard code references in our code. Let's use this rows.count syntax to do the same thing. Just going to show you how it works with the message box. Hit the F5 key. Excel knows how many rows are in the spreadsheet and using the dot count property, externalizing that in a message box, we can see that this is the number of rows in Excel. How cool is that? So rather than doing this in a hard coded way, moving on to our next macro, we can do this in a more dynamic way by using rows.count concatenating with the column letter there. Hit the F5 key. We're going to select the same thing. Let's go back to the top. Let's prove this and let's hit F5 here. We can see we've got back to the bottom of Excel. Pretty cool stuff. So with a weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners on your computer, click join below this video for more.
I've done the rows. How many columns are there in Excel? Stop the video. How many columns are there in Excel? You know how to do this, certainly with a small extension of what we've done. Let's hit the F5 key here and we can see 16,384 columns in Excel. What three letter combination does that equate to? I had to memorize this in my masters. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's not what we do at university, honestly. Right. So a columns dot count here. So we want to select the last column and we want to do it in a dynamic way. So we don't want to hard code the letters. We want to use numbers. So we can just do this, right? We can just use this one again. What's the problem going to be? Well, to reference a column, we have to use a letter if we're using the range referencing technique. So let's use a different referencing techniques and let's introduce cells. The cells referencing technique. We've got a video about this on the channel. Hit the F5 key, selecting the first cell in the spreadsheet. Uh, hit the F5 key again. Which cell is going to be selected now? Well, it's rows and then columns. Always rows and then columns in Excel. We can see we've got the third row, the first column selected. Play around with this. Spend your evening playing around with this, building the skill, consolidating, having fun. That's what learning is all about. So we've introduced our next foundational concept, which is cells. Now, cells allows us to use numbers rather than letters to refer to columns. How cool is that? Well, we're going to see now because we're going to use cells combined with columns.count that we used a couple of macros ago to select to the end of the spreadsheet dynamically. How cool is that? Hit the F5 key and I can see just down here we've got to sell XFD. XFD, it's the end of the world again. So that's how we can do it dynamically. Select to the end of the spreadsheet. Is this all coming together for you? Is this all coming together? Now we can select dynamically to the end. We can then say to Excel, start at the end and come back across. Start at the end and come back across to the first cell that has data in, which in our case would be cell F4. So let's think about how uh, to do that. And let's do it with the rows first. So you can see we've reintegrated our little line, magic line of syntax, which is going to go up to the next row that has data in. If it starts in a cell that doesn't have data in, hit the F5 key. What's going to happen? What cell is going to be selected? You'll be able to see it in your screenshot, hitting F5 key now. And B21 is selected. How cool is that? Let's prove that to ourselves. Put a piece of data here. Uh, run the same routine. Hit the F5 key. And now B24 is selected. It's starting at the bottom and stopping at the first line of data. Super useful for us when we're trying to maintain these data sets dynamically. Can we do the same things using columns? A weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners. On your computer, click join below this video for more. So starting over here and going back across, stop the video, see if you can do this. Going to hit the F5 key now, which cell is going to be selected. Let's hit the F5 key now, just outside of your screenshot, and I can see F3 is selected there. You'll notice I've started on the third column, started on the third column. If you have one here, then what's going to happen? You'll be able to see this. You can see we've gone to A1 because there's no data there. Nothing's stopping it uh, as it stopped when it was in the third row. And don't do that. Control Z, F5 key. And we'll see now, let's do it one more time here. We'll see now that cell F4 is going to be selected. F3 rather is going to be selected. No, it's not. Okay, <laughs> let's go to row three there. F5. Okay, and F3 is selected. So can you put all of this together? All of this together. Let's remind ourselves uh, what's going to happen. Well, if we even if we've got gaps in the data, we might have another line of data down here. We might have another column over here uh, with some data, and maybe with one column missing some data here. Whatever's happening, we're going to do a pretty good job of selecting the whole data set. Beautiful, powerful, professional level Excel VBA techniques here. So when I when I execute the punch the air routine, punch the air, make sure you punch the air if it works. What's going to happen? Stop the video. Look at this data set up here. What's going to happen when I execute this routine here? I'm not going to explain it all to you. Looks complicated, but we've gone step by step through this video. All of this syntax, you can go back to the other easier macros, understand it, build that foundation and then push forward. So let's hit the F5 key here and we can see all of our data is selected there. I'm going to go ahead and just clear this data. 
and run it again. So always prove it to yourself. Don't just believe me. Don't just believe VBA. Test it. Build confidence. Improve it. And you can see what's happening there. Let's do one more here. I've lost the VBA editor. Uh, let's put uh, another entry here, hitting the punch, the air macro, and you can see how these powerful, powerful uh, techniques are working. I'm using these every day in my work. When I first learned them, helped to take me from beginner or intermediate level right up to professional level. So that's an Excel VBA position control mastery in 13 easy macros. Hope it helps you. Let me know what you think.